I hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and welcome back to another Boxman devlog. Before we get started, the Steam page is up. Go wish us the game. And for more up-to-date information, and if you have any ideas that you'd like to see in the game, unfortunately YouTube's comment section quickly swallows any and all ideas, come join our Discord and follow us on Instagram and Twitter, or X, whatever it's called now. Links are in the description. I'd also like to say a big thank you to the people I met at Pixar Expo in early August and Perth Games Festival, which I uh, was supposed to put into this video before it came out to ask more of you to come down, but uh, oh well. It was wonderful and really encouraging to see people who watch the videos attend the expo and help to provide us with some really valuable feedback. It was also somewhat wacky knowing that you guys came out to play the game. It's kind of weird having an audience. To the rest of you, don't worry, we're hard at work putting the final touches on our very first Boxman demo for you all to play. We're aiming to have it up and ready to play soon. As I said in the last video, we'll post on all social medias once the demo is up, along with a very short video for those who don't have the aforementioned socials. So you're all in the loop. And another big thank you for everyone's feedback on the last mainline video. We definitely agree with everyone in that option B, shooting directly upwards, would not only be a lot more fun for players, but allow for some more difficulty for certain collectibles. Thanks again for the feedback. Now, I know I said we'd be focusing on the level select this video, but with the soon to be launched demo, along with all the teasing of this new level talk, as well as the cinematics playing in the background of the video you're watching right now, I felt like it'd be more suited to mainly talk about that instead. So without further ado, let me run you through the process on how we made this level. First off, I started with gathering random images pertaining to many aspects of the level and chapter. Anything ranging from lighting, colours, general aesthetics to specific objects, gameplay mechanics and puzzles. It didn't really matter the source or quality, just whatever got the ideas flowing. As you can see, we've gone for an autumn theme for this first chapter. This was done to bring a sense of warmth and familiarity to levels, since this is essentially the tutorial chapter before the players are eventually transported to more extravagant places, which I'll discuss in later videos. Also, because another name for autumn is fall, and box literally falls into this chapter. But the former explanation sounds like something my high school English teacher would have wanted me to say. Next is the drawn level map. This is where I start to sequentially draw out my initial ideas for the level, keeping in mind player size, speed, and current abilities. I started by figuring out the main visual features that would make the local areas memorable. I wanted people to, when describing the levels, say something like, hey, you know that one puzzle at the pond in the first chapter? And have the other person respond easily, knowing what they're referring to. So for this level, the main areas are the pond, the deforested zone, and the clearing. After completing the initial drawn level layout overview, I sometimes skip directly to the white boxing process. This time was no different. However, I did make some more detailed area maps to help with layout of the puzzle locations and to figure out where the player will be going. Now's the fun part, white boxing. Though I know a lot of people struggle with this part, especially with a blank canvas syndrome, which I do get quite a lot as well. But this one video that I couldn't recommend enough by Peter Field called Spatial Communication and Level Design it's such a fantastic breakdown on how to get started with your 3D level designs, helping to communicate to your player the direction they need to be going in without holding their hand. The link to this amazing video is in the description. As I started making the level from my drawings, I realised something regarding my initial design. It was too long. As I ran and jumped through the blank canvas, from start to end it came out to over 20 minutes, with 5 minutes dedicated to purely walking, which is way too long for essentially no content so I cut three points in my sketch, prioritising the quality over the quantity. Even so, in retrospect, I would have loved to move some puzzles around as sequentially the difficulty ramps up too high too quickly. This means I had to unfortunately cut out the enemies from this demo, as I opted to properly teach the player the mechanics. This stems also from the initial playtests of my very old demo. People seem to struggle a little bit with the enemies with my very quick mechanic introduction. Don't fret however, I'll be putting up my old demo level as well as the second demo level after the initial demo has been released, which will include more colourful casts of friendly NPCs and our dastardly enemies. Just to break things up, I wanted to show you the current progress of our level select hub. As hinted at in the intro cutscene you saw at the start, the player begins in a dusty warehouse, where 
box will then crash in from the ceiling into this crudely decorated shoebox. The player will then have three interaction points to choose from, left being the customization store, where you can buy, with the packing peanuts collected in-game, special clothes that aren't present throughout the game. I'll also place new costumes in here from time to time, so once the game releases, check back every so often to see what's new. To the right, the spoon achievements. This is where the player can physically see how far they've progressed through the game, as well as see what remains. In the center is the level controller. This is where the player can select the chapter and the level that they wish to play. Currently, I'm still working out the programming on the store and the achievements, so they won't be working by the time you get your hands on the initial demo. If you've made it this far in the video, don't forget to subscribe, <clears throat> and thanks a ton for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for supporting my game as it's becoming more and more of a reality. To help showcase my appreciation, I'd love to see and hear about the potential costume ideas from you guys. Hop into our Discord and under the game ideas chat, post your ideas. Make sure to add the tag costume so I can easily find them all. If we choose your idea, we'll put your name in the costume's description. Alright, let's get back to the level. After a few weeks of tweaking, and I was finally happy with how the level played, the team and I got to making. the initial location themes as we populated the areas, making them different enough visually that the player knows that they've progressed further in the level, but cohesive enough that nothing looks out of place in the environment. We also wanted to showcase and remind the player that these areas are all held within boxes of mementos, so we scattered specific, unaltered assets that ground these levels into reality, which can be seen by the book mountains and the pen markers. So, am I happy with this level? I'd say mostly. Visually, I think it's pretty much what I want. I'd probably place a few more reality assets into other levels that the player can see more prominently and potentially interact with. In terms of interaction points, I'd love to have more secrets and collectibles around for the player to find, thus having more branching pathways that always lead back to the main objective. I 100% want to encourage players to go off the beaten path, but I think currently, the structure of this level doesn't account for this. That being said, as a first proof of concept for potential publishers, and especially all of you, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. And I hope you guys will be too. And that wraps up everything that has been done for this demo level. In the next video, I'll be going over how our demo showcases went at the two expos we've presented at, talking about general reception, demographic experience, recommendations for any of you who are looking to present at showcases, and what we'll be making sure to employ going forward. Alright, see ya.